Hi, I'm Tim Sanova, and welcome to How We Work. Today, we're taking a closer look at the battle of the urgent versus the important. Am I the only person who occasionally finishes a busy day at the office, only to discover that I didn't accomplish any of the truly important things on my to-do list? The things that actually move the organization forward. I've worked hard all day, I've sent a flurry of emails, I've returned calls, I've participated in a bunch of meetings, I'm left utterly exhausted, and yet still, I'm staring at a list full of do or die priorities. I'll go out on a limb here and posit that this isn't something unique to me. Throughout our lives, we're constantly fighting this battle of the urgent versus the important. The important, those things that move organizations forward, that change the game, and that make a dent in the universe. The urgent, the stuff that's on fire, that's noisy, but its relative importance ranks far below dent in the universe. And if left unchecked, the urgent fills our days, seducing us with its sweet, sweet false sense of accomplishment and distracting us from the important work that changes the world. So how can we make headway on this important work? I have nine strategies for you to try. At, at one point or another, these strategies have helped me manage my time and avoid letting the endless list of urgent distract me from the higher purpose work. Number one, pre-game your work. Before you race out of the office on Friday, take five minutes to jot down what you think should be your three do or die priorities for the coming week. Then post the list on your monitor. During the following week, start each day by assessing the relative importance or urgency of the items on your entire to-do list as compared to your do or die priorities. Variation, if, if public shaming is a motivator for you, start your week with a team stand-up. Give each person 30 seconds to relay their two or three do or die priorities for the week. Write them on a whiteboard where the team can see them throughout the week. And each Monday, review the list together and mark uncompleted items with an X. This also serves as a great way to discuss what your coworkers view as priorities and offers everyone a chance to ask clarifying questions. Pro tip, use your morning commute to think through what success looks like for each meeting during your day. If you don't know what you're trying to get out of a meeting, you don't stand a chance at achieving it. Number two, drown out your distractions. No, not with bourbon, although that's helpful on occasion. Do you work in an open office or at a coffee shop or a co-working space? A dollar or two can go a long way to help you blocking out distractions so you can stay focused longer and accomplish more. Download a white noise or a background noise app Put it on your phone and crank up a thunderstorm or try coffee and take the coffee shop with you. My personal favorite one working in noisy spaces is the crowded room. Suddenly, my neighbor's conversation about their wild weekend melts into the electronic din. Number three, create meeting-free zones. Experiment with no meeting Fridays. Meetings often get a bad rep, but they're a fact of life and can actually be quite helpful and productive if done well. However, Having a day when you can dedicate large chunks of uninterrupted time can help you focus and, and stay in the zone while tackling important projects. But beware that quick 15 minute meeting can totally kill the benefits of an otherwise productive no meeting day. Number four, let it go to voicemail. Close Slack, close Flow. close AIM or that 1990s chat group where an I'm working on important shit don't disturb me hat. Just because other people are trying to reach you doesn't mean you need to be reachable. If it can't wait, they'll make it known. When people email you or, or leave a voicemail, they're adding something to your to-do list. They're in essence saying that their priorities should be your priorities. If that person is your supervisor, then they may be correct, but less likely if it's a sales call from Staples. Be protective of your time. Just because someone calls or emails doesn't mean you need to reply immediately. Number five, leave breadcrumbs. Studies show that if you're in the flow, it can take 23 minutes to recover from a distraction. Distractions and interruptions are inevitable, so figure out a system to help you reduce your re-entry time. When you get interrupted, ask the person to give you a second to jot a quick note to remind yourself where you left off and what you were going to do next. It might not save you the full 23 minutes, but it can cut down considerably on the time it takes you to get back into the flow. Number six, delete everything in your inbox. Okay, this is the bold move and not, not one that everyone has the luxury of doing. That said, think about how much time is required after a vacation or a leave to respond to all the emails that accumulated while you're away. What kind of opportunity cost does your struggle from 700 emails to inbox equals zero mean to your organization? 
you're not just replying to those emails. Shortly, you're replying to the emails from those emails and so on. When you set up your autoresponder for your time away, create a, a filter to automatically file all of those emails that come in during your time to land in a folder marked March 2017 vacation. Then when you come back from your time away, start your time back without spending a few days digging yourself out of a hole. Your time off the grid is only as good as your ability to manage not being slammed the moment you walk through the office door. You know what will likely happen if you try this. A few people will get back to you. Otherwise, some things will solve themselves and other things aren't at all important. Number seven, check your email three times a day. Check or reply to email once in the morning, once at lunchtime, and, and another time before you head out for the day. Then the rest of the time, close your email client and resist the incessant urge to see if anyone's been thinking about you. This system will allow you to create much more productive blocks of time in your day to focus on your important work. Remember, 23 minutes to get back into the flow for after distraction. Constantly checking email means you're always being interrupted by the, the sweet sense of accomplishing the urgent. I promise you that you'll find many things resolve themselves when you're not checking, or a colleague eloquently chimes in with exactly what you would have said, but now you don't have to. Number eight, don't clean your desk. Or by another name, don't clean your dorm room before starting work on that term paper. Don't do it. Use your peak mental capacity to tackle the important stuff first. Resist the urge to feel like you're making progress by checking off several small, easy items. You tell yourself that you're ramping up into bigger things or clearing out the small things to focus solely on the big things, but what happens in reality is that you're just eating up your time and draining your brain power. If and when you're ready to tackle the important stuff, you're left to operate at less than maximum mental capacity, and surprise, surprise, more urgent things have found their way onto your list. Give yourself 90 minutes of focus, uninterrupted time to work on something each morning before tackling all those quick little things that have a habit of filling the day. Do a quick scan of your email to get a sense for what's there and then resist the urge to quickly reply to a few emails or, or do a few brief tasks like making coffee or, or chatting with a colleague about your latest binge watching a session. Walk into the office, sit down at your desk, open that Word, Excel, or presentation document and dive right in. If you get distracted by coworkers, arrive early at the office so you're wrapping up your initial 90 minutes when the place starts coming alive. And if you're still tempted to quickly check the tracking information on that Amazon package, the weekend weather, or Facebook updates, go hardcore and block your internet or email for a set period of time using one of a variety of apps. Number nine, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. This little gem will save you years, but it's often the most difficult to implement. We've all been there, spending countless hours on a project to get it 90% complete and then spending the same amount of time to move at that final 10%. In the grand scheme of things, did, did the last 10% really matter? Did anyone even notice? We have finite time in which to accomplish our important work. Don't squander four hours of precious time on something that won't impact the outcome. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. This is often the biggest challenge for type A, overachiever, perfectionists among us. I mean, don't release work riddled with spelling errors and shoddy design. There's a certain bar we need to clear. That's the 90%. But don't obsess and toil away at that last 10% if, if there'll be no discernible impact. Pro tip, deputize a trusted friend or colleague to grab you by the collar when you need to wrap it up and ship it. When it comes to the constant battle of the urgent versus the important, no time management strategy lasts forever. It's a series of strategies and tactics that will enable us to look back with more pride on what we've accomplished than regret on what might have been. And there you have it, nine strategies to help you manage the battle of the urgent versus the important. Until next time, stay classy, Internet.